Hello and welcome to another With a Sharpie video. Uh, it's David Kearns here. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about uh, hydrogen. Um, so hydrogen is a chemical uh, fuel, so it's a gas uh, that's used uh, extensively in industry already. Uh, so it's used in industries like oil refining um, in particular, uh, as well as chemicals manufacture. Uh, but it's come to interest far more over the past uh, decade or so um, as a potential fuel source for uh, some particular types of electric vehicles that run on fuel cells um, and also some internal combustion engine cars as well um, that have been designed to run on hydrogen. Uh, it's not widespread in that application yet. The reason it's come of interest is it gives you the potential to have zero CO2 emissions from the exhaust of the car uh, while you're driving. Uh, when you use hydrogen it gets converted into water vapour basically. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you today about how hydrogen is made. Um, there's a few different ways that it can be made and there's different implications in terms of carbon and sustainability uh, for the different production methods. So enjoy. Okay, let's get into it. Um, we're talking about hydrogen here, um, also known as H2. Uh, the reason it's called H2 is it's uh, hydrogen gas is two hydrogen atoms joined together. So H2 is the, the standard chemical symbol for hydrogen gas. Uh, and when we're talking about hydrogen, um, there's three main ways that it's made in industry. So the first one is known as um, electrolysis. Uh, the second is known as reforming, or sometimes steam reforming. Um, and the third is uh, coal gasification. So I'll quickly go through all three of them and we'll talk a little bit about the implications. So electrolysis, as the name suggests, essentially is using electrical energy, so electricity, um, to take a substance that we're all familiar with, water. So let's say we've got a container here and it's full of water. As we know, the makeup of water is H2O, two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom joined together. Um, and what we can do is, I won't get into the, uh, the chemistry too much, but essentially what we can do is we can put some electricity into this system. Um, and the effect of that electricity is that we end up with uh, two electrodes in here, one of which is producing hydrogen gas, uh, the other which of which is producing oxygen gas, which is O2. So effectively what the electricity does is it splits up the water, it creates some hydrogen gas on one side and it creates some oxygen gas on the other. So um, this is a relatively clean, simple way of making hydrogen. Um, it's got the advantage. So the advantage of this is that you can um, essentially make um, CO2 free hydrogen. So, so long as your electricity comes from a source uh, that didn't produce um, CO2 emissions, so let's say it's from wind or solar power, uh, you can very easily uh, use this process to produce hydrogen. Um, a disadvantage of it is that it's um, relatively expensive, certainly compared to um, some of these other options over here. And so uh, that's something to think about if you want to make hydrogen um, that's CO2 free or doesn't have CO2 emissions involved in its production, I should say. Um, but once you've got that hydrogen gas there, you can put it through a bit of gas cleanup and um, effectively have your, your hydrogen that you need. Um, the second option is known as steam reforming. So steam reforming is a little bit more complex, but we'll, we'll step you through it. Um, what this takes is it takes um, methane. So methane is the main gas that is in natural gas. So I'll do NG for natural gas here. Uh, and what we do is we put that into a special type of chemical reactor called a reformer or a steam reformer. Uh, these operate pretty hot, uh, around 1000 degrees Celsius. It can be a bit higher or a bit lower. Um, and into that we also inject some water, so H2O. Now of course when it's that hot it becomes steam, so that's why we refer to it as steam reforming. And in there we've got some special catalysts. Um, in this case, I think the catalysts are made of nickel or they're nickel compounds. Um, and what they do is they effectively help to rearrange these molecules. So uh, the methane molecule, just so you know, is a carbon attached to four hydrogens or CH4. We've got some uh, water molecules here. And what we end up with coming out of the other side is a mix. So we have some uh, methane and water that didn't react. So they're sort of left over. 
but in the process we've also made some um, some carbon monoxide uh, so some of you will know of that as a, a toxic gas um, and we've made some hydrogen some H2 um, what we can then do is we can put that mixture of gases into a second type of reactor which is known as a water gas shift reactor now what a water gas shift reactor does is it actually allows us to convert carbon monoxide into some carbon dioxide and some more hydrogen and so what we basically have going into that is uh, carbon monoxide now sometimes people will separate carbon monoxide here and put it in here sometimes they'll just put the whole lot of this in here um, that's more common to put all of this in here but effectively what we're working with is we've got carbon monoxide and we've got uh, water again or steam uh, this one operates a little bit uh, lower temperature maybe about 350 degrees Celsius um, and what that does is it, it makes some carbon dioxide CO2 carbon dioxide uh, and it makes some more hydrogen so what you can see here is that we started off over here with some natural gas some methane by reacting it with some water and in a reformer and then reacting what comes out of that with a little bit more water we've ultimately turned those into carbon dioxide and hydrogen so one of the immediate sort of advantages that you you can um, find out about this is that uh, steam reforming is the most common way of making hydrogen in the world today so hydrogen in this case is used for things like um, oil refining so it's used for removing sulfur from crude oil for example um, it's used for chemicals manufacture so making substances like ammonia uh, one of the precursor chemicals you need to make ammonia is hydrogen uh, one of the advantages is that it's relatively cheap because we're taking a cheap fuel methane and we're converting into hydrogen um, an obvious disadvantage is um, well we're making co2 okay so we have to think about um, how comfortable we are particularly in a world we're trying to get um, emissions under control of making co2 uh, and so this immediately raises one obvious comparison uh, between these two you can see here that we've made hydrogen with co2 over here we made hydrogen without co2 the hydrogen is exactly the same the only difference is whether some co2 was involved in its uh, in its manufacture um, and so in this regard hydrogen is very much like electricity so the electricity we get from our grid could be produced from an emissions intensive place like a coal-fired power station or it could come from a very low emission source like solar or, or wind power um, the electricity is the same it's only the source of it and so in this case we refer to hydrogen sometimes as an energy carrier it is not a source of energy because we have to make it from something else but it's like a medium of exchange a little bit like a dollar a dollar can be used as a medium of exchange um, hydrogen and electricity are mediums of energy exchange they let you get energy to where it needs to go um, the third form is something known as coal gasification and these use big reactors called gasifiers um, they operate pretty hot typically um, the temperature range can vary quite a, a lot so I'll just say that they're hot um, and what we do typically for those is as the name would suggest we add coal to them so we put some coal in uh, it could be black coal could be brown coal um, typically we would also need to inject some air uh, or we might actually use purified oxygen which is O2 um, and what that um, process will do is it will um, effectively the oxygen um, oh and what, sorry there's a third ingredient here which is water which is steam in this case uh, sometimes there's water already in the coal sometimes you have to add it depending on how dry the coal is um, and what happens effectively is that the chemical reactions here help strip the hydrogen off the water so in sort of a chemical way somewhat equivalent to what you're seeing over here with electrolysis where we're using coal and oxygen to drive a reaction that breaks water up and so what we can get out of there is we can get some hydrogen uh, and we can get some co2 and we can also get a range of other uh, compounds some of which are pollutants just depending on how the reactor runs um, so again some advantages here so advantages uh, is coal is cheap so it's a cheap uh, feedstock to make hydrogen uh, disadvantage again make co2 so uh, historically uh, steam reforming has been the most popular way of making hydrogen gasification is probably second less popular second most popular and electrolysis is a long way behind 
However, because people are interested in making hydrogen and making it without the CO2 impacts, electrolysis is starting to gain a foothold. Uh, there is one, one other example that um, people can use steam reforming and if they get their source of methane, instead of coming from natural gas, maybe it could come from landfill gas. Well, the gas in landfills is typically uh, caused by bacteria breaking down food and waste food and plant material. Um, that's known as biogenic source of carbon and uh, any CO2 emissions produced from that um, effectively are considered carbon neutral because the carbon that is being released was originally in the air. So uh, there are some people who argue that if we take landfill gas and put it through a steam reforming process, uh, that would be a way of getting the advantages of a relatively cheap source of hydrogen uh, without the disadvantage of a net CO2 contribution to the atmosphere. Um, that's a little contentious because there's no way that there's ever going to be enough landfill gas to meet all of the hydrogen needs that we might need in the future. Anyway, I hope that was uh, informative for you to, to learn a little bit about how hydrogen is made. Uh, this has been David Kearns. Um, you have a good day.